Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Looking for Love and All the Wrong Dust Jackets, a show where three disgruntled harpies talk to you about everything we love in romance, whether that's books, movies, TV shows, whatever we like. My name's Liz. I'm Danny. And I'm Wiggles. And welcome to the episode. And welcome to season two. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Guess who's back? <laughs> back again. Barely left. <laughs> Tell your yeah. friends. <laughs> That was amazing. (sighs) So today we are reading the viral book uh, Bride by Allie Hazelwood. But uh, before we talk about that, I got to warn the people, if you haven't figured it out by now, we are crass and unhinged and we swear and we're going to talk about all the nodding times. I meant to say all the naughty times, but it came out all the nodding times, which is appropriate for this book. Yep. I need to go to bed. Anyway. (laughs) It's 9.30 in the morning. I never should have left bed. It's 9 o'clock on a Saturday. (laughs) Stop it. How many times am I going to sing today? (laughs) Um, Anyway, what have you guys been up to? Talk to me. Get me caught up on your lives. Okay, well, so I read the last of the um, Improbable Meet Cute series, uh, Royal Valentine by Sarah Wilson. It was cute. Um... Uh, yeah, it was cute. It was cute. That's all I got to say about it. Um, <laughs> and then I went totally unhinged. And Shocking. <laughs> so I, I'm sure you've seen on TikTok those really terrible ads for those really terrible short, like, video stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was morbidly curious. Oh, no. It's literally the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. And so I watched so much of it. <laughs> 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 wait what is it on an app yeah i like even paid for it i didn't even care like i was like i think i'm 16 dollars into this garbage <laughs> because it is so bad like it's like you what you imagine it being as bad you're wrong it's worse and uh yeah uh, it w- <sighs> what is the app called uh, which one it's is called this? short tv oh no it's so bad <laughs> now i have to know basically um if you were ever on that app galeta or galia whatever the fuck i don't know how you pronounce it uh they took those stories and were like let's get actors to come in and do these when i tell you the the so the one i watched was a wolf shifter one the (laughs) first of all the wolf the wolves are like somebody they like feel like they're from 90s animation and then they're very poorly applied like the the costumes look like somebody was like i'm going to find nice ish things because you know they're alphas of the blah 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 pack and it's like but i wish that was the worst because the worst is the acting (laughs) imagine you go and get a degree in acting and you spend your life delivering lines like, no, that's not my, that's my Omega. Leave her alone. <laughs> so anyway, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got. That was great. I had kind of a rough week. So I d- Yes, I watched Grey's Anatomy. I needed an excuse to cry. And then I watched the new season of um, Blown Away. I don't know what that is. So it's a Netflix reality show that is, it's kind of like Great British Bake Off, but it's glass blowing. Oh, I think I ha- I do know what you're talking about. Now. Yeah. So it's on like season four now. So I watched the new season of that because that's fun to watch. There is no drama. It's all about glass blowing. And that is fascinating. And then last night I had a, uh, me and another one of my friends, she was like, you know whoa, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. You have other friends? I do indeed. Yes. How dare you? betrayal she was like you know what we need a we're gonna put roots in the couch kind of night so we're just gonna rot on the couch and watch trash tv so we did that we watched some below deck we watched some asmr videos we watched karen freakouts like we were just we put roots in and chilled see i wasn't invited i'm sorry i'm kidding (laughs) she's not (laughs) okay well that's nice. Yeah. What'd um, you do, Liz? I read 
or listened to Resting Witch Face by Juliet Cross, which is the Jules Rubin one. It's clearly the best in the bunch because it's like book five and she plotted or put into all every single other book their story. So by the time you get to book five, she's just like, and they're together. And I'm like, yes, I've been waiting. Finally! <laughs> It's so good. Um, yeah, that one's really good, uh, especially when it's read by Aiden Snow. God damn. Mm. Audiobook so daddy. <laughs> we will never not be obsessed with him at this point. Yeah. If he if he turns out that he's like a bad guy as well, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm yeah. not gonna be okay for like weeks. <laughs> I will never forget. It was one of our very first episodes that we recorded that I was like, but guys, I listened to the audiobook and like we got done recording. I'm like, no, you guys don't understand because I think it was for the fine print. Mm -hmm. It sure was. And I was like, you guys don't understand. And it was his point of view to start out with. And so I just started the book and both of you were like, "Ah!" I'm like, yep, I listened to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do have another one. Do you now? Yeah. I'd love to hear about it. I listened to, I've been in an audiobook thing lately. I don't know. But I listened to I'm Glad My Mom Died Mm -hmm. by Jeanette McCurdy. It's really good, Mm -hmm. but woof, is it really hard. Mm -hmm. Lots of trigger warnings for child abuse and um, eating disorders. And the hardest part, I think, when I read it was in the narrative where she did not realize she was being abused yeah and you're just Mm -hmm. like no stop yeah (gasps) um i think she did a really good job of like letting the reader know hey these things are happening and i'm uncomfortable but my mom just loves me so much and i'm like you poor abused child Mm -hmm. yeah and then i dnf'd a book which i was very proud of myself for being like no i don't like it i'm not gonna read it sometimes you gotta do that yeah but that's what i did so let's talk about Bride, huh? Well. Fuck okay, yeah, let's talk about Bride. I'm going to mention a couple things about Allie Hazelwood. Um, but if you want more information, I'm pretty sure we talked about her when we did our episode, Love on the Brain. Um, so that's a great time to learn more about her. Um, quick overview. A neuroscientist who's like, what if I wrote smut? And I can get behind that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. She's our age, which is super cool. Millennials. Bow, 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 bow. She's a neuroscientist and a best-selling author. Yeah. What a bitch. I know. God damn it. <laughs> um, her next book that's coming out in June is Not in Love. So check that one out. Promises to be good. Um, other books that have come out since we did Love on the Brain, uh, Check and Mate, which is YA, mm-hmm. um, which means I probably won't ever read it, <laughs> and Love Theoretically. So, Yeah. But here's the fun news. I saw an interview that she did where she said she wants to write a sequel to Bride. Well, she hints it at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With uh, her bestest best friend. Uh-huh. 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 Well, and if it's not them, there are other options as well. There's so many options. So There's many Owen, her brother. Yes. What's his life like? Right? There was a moment where I was like, is, it go- is Owen? Gonna get with the the well. We'll get into yeah. it. Yeah, we'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off with what the hell this book is about. Danny going over to Danny Connor. So, I I'm I'm unhinged. It's fine. Um, so Bride is about basically a society where where vampires, werewolves, or shifters, and humans all kind of coexist, but they are very tense everything be very tense Mm -hmm. the vampires and humans have this whole collateral system set up where they send a child as a hostage for if shit goes down they're like yeah we can kill this for this child first and it always has to be the child of a politician of somebody in in charge of whatever society so our main girl misery she was the collateral um as a child and then she got back to the vampires and they didn't treat her like she was one of them because she had grown up among humans and everything so basically she gets her own identity and everything she has fake human papers and then she is working and living in the human world with her best friend who was the who was supposed to be her like human companion when she was collateral 
and is now just her bestie. Well, all of a sudden her bestie disappears. She's looking for her and everything and she gets summoned back to the vampires. And apparently now she's getting married to a shifter, Alpha, because they're doing a whole different collateral situation. Mm -hmm. Discuss. Oh, and we will. Oh, we will. Many ways. I've only ever read one other Allie Hazelwood, which was Love on the Brain that we read for the podcast. But this book, from what I'm remembering, feels like it's written differently. Like there's still the sass, but it, from what I'm remembering, and Wiggles, you can correct me if I'm wrong because you've read at least one more book than I have of hers. <laughs> <laughs> but it feels like the writing style is just like a little different in this book. My experience with reading Allie Hazelwood is that her craft is improving with every book. Sure. And so I think that that's probably what you're picking up on. Like it, it's in some ways it feels like her plot devices that she really likes are all still in there but it does also feel like she's approaching the conversation a little bit differently mm. and it's almost like she's gotten out of the phase where she feels like she has to explain everything like you can let the reader sort of come to some conclusions mm-hmm. yeah that definitely happened in this book sometimes I think it went a little too far though like Mm -hmm. I'd be reading a scene and all of a sudden literally the next paragraph would just be a different scene with no (laughs) like actual break or transition and I would have to go back and be like whoa wait a minute you were we were in the middle of this conversation and now she's over here it's true what is happening there are pros and cons to this (laughs) (laughs) yeah I also think that the the other difference is I I don't know I never have re- found any of her fan fiction I I don't know what she was sure. like the pseudonym she was writing under even but it feels like maybe this is more her bread and butter <laughs> yeah yeah and that and that writing contemporary romance is just her modifying things I don't know I don't know I don't want to presume but. Well, and that is a thing that sometimes pe- sometimes authors do is they switch kind of not genres because it's still the romance genre, but type of of romance. And yeah, I I definitely felt it more in this book than I did Love on the Brain. Like I didn't hate Love on the Brain, but it was not like my super jam. Mm-hmm. But I really liked Bride. <laughs> And I wondered if that was more a me bias thing because this is much more my jam than Love on the Brain is, but maybe I'm not. Maybe I was also picking up on maybe this is more her jam. Well, I think, too, that there's maybe um, a different style approach when she takes this STEM aspect a little bit out of it. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's still present here. Um, um, misery misery i keep wanting to call her mercy which is not right no misery is like a computer science nerd mm-hmm. right but it's not this it's not quite the same as like writing in a stem environment yeah and so i wonder if that detachment allows her a little more freedom to not feel like she has to make sure you understand the world she's bringing you into i could see that yeah just a thought but yeah so i mean like let's let's talk about misery a little bit because she's we are only reading from her point of view except for those little excerpts at the beginning which i fucking loved loved those so the only time we get lowe's low who is the werewolf husband alpha bro the only time we get his perspective is these like little snippets that are like at the top of every chapter and i loved them so much they were so good yes and they kind of contextualize what's going to happen in the the chapter yep. ahead and you're like Ooh, he loves her <laughs> <laughs> well it also lets us as the reader in on things that misery doesn't know right yeah yeah so sometimes i just wanted to reach through the book and grab her and be like no he does like you stop it to be fair he was fully telling lies true yeah you can't know? even be mad at her about it because yeah she wasn't telling the truth yeah but starting with her childhood so she's born a twin in a in the vampire world which just doesn't happen apparently and they just uh, have low birth rates in general yes yeah and she and like between the two of them her mother does not survive giving birth and so because she was the second one to come out and her mom died after they named her misery and then named her brother fucking Owen. Right. Just like yeah. a regular ass name. Just like a regular schmegular name. And especially dumb when Omen is right there. It, true. Right? Like, why not? I don't understand. It makes perfect <laughs> sense. Omen to misery. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. I just need to get that out of my system. 
Like, Allie, you really, you really shit the bed on that one. Or she did it on purpose. To, to irk people like me? Yeah. 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 Well, great success. <laughs> <laughs> but so then her and her brother grow up very close in spite of their dad being kind of a, like a shit heel. Not kind of. He is. He is a shit yeah, heel. He is a shit um, heel. And her dad's like, oh, we're going to do this collateral thing. I pick you, misery. Go. <laughs> and just like sends her off to the human world without a care in the world. And he's like, all right, it was nice knowing you. Stop crying. I'll visit you once a year. <laughs> Like, what? And so her brother and her, like, drift apart, or so she perceives it. Um, Later on, we find out that her brother is, like, never gotten over that. Right. Because she has to live with the humans for 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Starting at age, like, eight. So basically, all of her formative years are being this outcast among humans. Yeah, she gets let out when she turns 18. And while she's there, they're like, wow, this little vampire child is super depressed. (laughs) That's crazy. I don't know why she can't just be happy with caregivers, whatever. Caregivers that abuse her. Right? And they're like, oh, I know. We'll steal an orphan. Yeah. Great. Become best friends now. (laughs) And they do. Which, I mean, it does work yeah. in the sense that it's like, well, you probably need somebody your own age yeah. to interact with. Still, I feel like it works not because they wanted it to, but because, like, it's one of those in the trenches together things. Yeah. yeah. Like, they're like, well, your life's fucked up. My life's fucked up. We're stuck here together. You're, right. <laughs> just like what the fuck i actually really appreciated the relationship between the two of them because it wasn't like all sunshines and rainbows Mm -hmm. they fucking fight and they fucking fight hard and like siblings and i appreciate that because sometimes the like bestie relationships in books are just like everything is peaches and cream they can do no wrong with each other and that's not reality like we fight about shit like Sometimes you got to just pour an alcoholic beverage on your friend's head. You deserved it. You deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, no one has poured an alcoholic beverage on me. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this relationship between Misery and Serena is the whole catalyst of the book. One of the things I like about this book and about the choices that uh, Misery ends up making is that it all is really about her friendship and everything else is like chaos bonus that's been thrown into her life. Everything is about I'm going to find my friend no matter what. Um, Consequences be damned. And I appreciate that they didn't just go with this idea of oh, she has a best friend and she's an inconvenient plot device. It's, she has a best friend. This is the plot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There happens to be this hot man also. (laughs) (laughs) The whole point from beginning to end is find this person. And also that, that, that concept doesn't just like fade away. Because sometimes I feel like the, oh shit, I'm doing something for my friend oh hot guy bye friend Mm -hmm. you no longer exist and it was never that it was always i need to find serena you are the only lead i have which is the only reason i was down with this situation yeah well and her logic makes sense you don't realize it at first you're like okay but i don't understand how you wanting to find your friend leads to you marrying a werewolf but then like it all becomes clear she kind of approached this like a mystery novel a little bit yeah which i enjoyed Uh, I also enjoyed that the flashbacks to when Misery found out that Serena was missing felt very rooted in reality for a fantasy paranormal novel of like trying to go to the cops and being like, this person is missing. I know that they're missing. Mm -hmm. I've been to their apartment. They are missing. And the cops just being like, what do you mean to do about it? Well, and that's unfortunately really well based in reality. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we watch true crime. This is a true crime house Right? right yes um and the thing is a lot of times the cops are the reason that these people get away is because they just don't take people seriously or they aren't actually going to investigate it or they don't think it matters or they just fuck up evidence but that's a different thing right <laughs> god damn it so i listened to this uh podcast called in the dark and their second season has gone viral um because they basically helped curtis flowers like get out of jail this man like 
you should just listen to it. It's amazing. But they did all this investigative journalism into it and were like, you did sh- really shitty cop work and this is not the guy who did the crime, right? The f- season prior to that, they're talking about um, one, this kid who goes missing and the cops, He, this kid was alive. Oh, God. The cops go over to his neighbors, don't investigate the house. And he was he was alive in the house at the time. Anyway, so right. like this is the kind of shit that I love romance novels for because they you can make a story that yes is primarily focused on the romance that these two characters are building, but good romance writers know that that's not the whole story. That's just a portion of the story, and so her her putting in details like the cops just not wanting to listen to a vampire make total sense right well and when you talk about romance it doesn't happen in a bubble like you're still living your lives Mm -hmm. and Lo and misery's kind of shared detective work that they're doing together trying to solve these problems is also one of the things that pushes them together so that's pretty cool Mm mm-hmm I also like, so, you know, we, we touched on it with, like, you get bits and pieces from flashbacks and stuff. She also kind of does that with the lore of the different species mm-hmm. because it's it's not like they ever did a list of no, yes, no about vampire lore or shifter lore or anything like that. But it's kind of like because they've been so sequestered from each other, they don't know what's real or not. And so it's just little conversations of be like, yeah, no, that's not a thing. Well, and it's the exact kind of thing that, like, if any of us were put in that position, we would absolutely do. Like, it'd be yeah. like, okay, so the garlic thing. Right. Real or not real? Like, I gotta, <laughs> I just want to know, because I really like Italian food. So, um, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> I just I, appreciate it that they didn't do the stereotypical yes, no, yes, no, yes. It was just yeah. kind of like, that. no, that's not a, that's not a thing, randomly. I also liked that they were the vampires were just a little bit different than what you'd expect. So typically in a lot of things that I read, vampires are the the strongest, the fastest, mm-hmm. the whateverest. And in this book, they kind of seemed like they were just like barely above humans and then the werewolves, the shifters were much stronger, much faster, all of this stuff and better at procreating and better at fucking. Yeah. Well, and in society they are not above humans. They are actually the lowest tier because they they could be the most easily wiped out. Right, right because they are literally dying out. Mm-hmm. Well, and in some ways, human beings are the quote-unquote top tier because they can populate so much faster than everybody right. else. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you guys think about Allie Hazelwood kind of creating her own set of rules for all of them like for example the werewolves have green blood and the vampires have purple blood so i swear that as soon as i started reading this book we were in maybe chapter two and i was like are the vampires vulcans and the werewolves are klingons (laughs) (laughs) Because the 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 thing that uh, Misery's dad says all the time is we always do everything for the betterment of the mm-hmm. vampires, right? And I was like, so the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the one, which is a, a reference to a Star Trek movie. Um, like basically say that. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the entire time I was just like, and the Vulcans are going to live with the Klingons. <laughs> like, yeah. I was just like. Here's the thing, though. Allie Hazelwood's a nerd. I know. So probably. <laughs> <laughs> I so. also got that. I was like, what What happened here? Nerddom? Is there secret nerddom in here? Uh, yeah. And in my head, I could just hear Bones going, those green-blooded hobgoblins. <laughs> 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 Which he says, he says it about Vulcans, um, but still. Uh, I just, um, I, I love that she committed to it, is kind mm-hmm. of my thing. Mm-hmm. Instead of just being like, oh, here's this, like, weird fact i'm gonna do because the the werewolves when they blushed they had like an olive tone instead of like a red tone or whatever i was like well you committed Mm -hmm. and i appreciate that if you're gonna do something weird go all in yeah i also like that she so she changed things slightly but not so off the wall that they're unrecognizable as creatures well, and that's kind of what you have to do when we have these preconceived notions of what a vampire and a werewolf is. Like, mm-hmm. you you can change it, but you can't change it so much that I'm, like, confused, you know? Well, and 
I I liked I didn't have a problem with any of the changes she made. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, one of the advantages of reusing conceptions of various different monsters and things like that is that the lore already exists. Mm -hmm. And so when you deviate from it, it kind of needs to serve a purpose. Otherwise you're just wasting time with info dumping. And so I feel like that happened a little bit where it was like, this didn't need to be that different. Yeah. I don't know why she changed their blood because there was never a point where it was used to like, distinguish anything there was never like a oh there's blood over there i wonder what it's from it's green so it's a where you know there was never like a a, a moment when it mattered mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at least none that i can remember and, and maybe that's a concept she's gonna touch on in, in her next book for it like maybe this is maybe. that's a, like a little preamble thing and so it has to be established first right the only thing i could think of why it mattered is with serena so the big reveal at the end Mm -hmm. is that serena is half Mm where she's one of the few hybrids because apparently they've gotten all the way to the modern age and nobody thought what if we fucked together which i thought was a little weird i was like how are we this far and nobody has thought of hybrids i think they probably just have been killing them off yeah the the way that human beings kill off things that they don't like people that they don't like Sure. Yeah. So the only reason I thought the blood maybe could matter is because Misery is remembering Serena as always having human blood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So but it didn't seem that valuable. I'll be honest. It didn't. I wouldn't say it took me out of the experience. But all I kept thinking of was remember in like the late 90s when they were like, I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to make different colors of ketchup. (laughs) That's all I could think the whole time. That purple ketchup, man. It tastes like normal ketchup. It did. <laughs> but there it was, was no special. Purpose. I never got There was the a green ketchup. ketchup too. Oh, my mother would never buy it. I had friends that yes. their parents bought it. My mom was like, you can eat the red ketchup and you shut can, up about yeah, it. Yeah, you can eat the cheap ketchup that's like 80 cents a bottle. Correct. Okay? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> but yeah, that's what it just kept triggering in my brain. I was like, mm, I remember that. I remember that. Okay. Okay. So you just got green ketchup in your veins. <laughs> I will say I was never, I don't ever remember being like interested enough in the colored ketchup to be like, to ever throw a fit about it or anything. No. I was like, cool. I got ketchup for my chicken nuggies. I'm happy. I didn't yeah. trust that stuff after you know, the the jar of peanut butter and jelly together. I had that one time and I was like, this is hot garbage. And so I was like, I bet this other crap they're coming up with is hot garbage. It is hot garbage. <laughs> that that peanut butter jelly mix is, we never got it, but I have tried it and it, it is hot garbage. And I'm like, it's, that's the ultimate lazy. You can't make a PB and J. Yeah. I don't know how people like it. The peanut butter is wrong. Just, it's like grainy. Yeah. How do you fuck it up? You just take the peanut butter and the jelly and you put them in the same jar. How would the manufacturers fuck that up so much? I think it's probably because it's not name brand peanut butter. So like, oh. I don't think they partnered with like Jif or something. Like sure. Smuckers was just like, we'll make our own shitty peanut butter. No, can't do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, peanut butter brands are a well-established thing. They're important. And I am not futzy about many brands like i will happily do the store brand for many things peanut butter is not one of them choosy moms choose jeff and that's that's what it is we have skippy in our house that's that's the only other one i will accept yeah that's uh, the only acceptable notion i realize. grew up having the red jar which is jeff yeah and pappy likes skippy and since he eats more peanut butter than i do he wins that's fair i mean yeah. fair enough skippy does have a better crunchy peanut butter i hate crunchy down. peanut butter and anybody who eats it is wrong in the head I I haven't bought it in years, <laughs> so I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm I will just saying, say, comparing the two, Skippy wins that one. While we're talking about like you know all the differences between that Ali Hazelwood made to the expected vampire werewolf, um, the other thing she did is she changed how vampires view drinking blood because mm-hmm. it's in almost every single book. It's this pleasurable act and they're seeking it out and there's like dens of sin where you you fuck and you drink the blood and it's Mm -hmm. great but in this book it's viewed as like this utilitarian like we go in the corner we drink our blood it's done it takes two minutes i have a straw right except that if you're with the right person it is very sexual except and so i almost wonder if the thought process was they were like 
that's messy and we're not engaging in that messy behavior because like her brother is like don't don't do that anymore it gets complicated please stop please stop doing this and she's like well it was weird because he's like don't tell me anything else yeah so when (laughs) misery has to bite low to like as a distraction diversion whatever from this espionage they're doing very hot scene it's a very hot very hot scene scene. and it's done in a library she is so confused by it because the other thing is misery didn't grow up with vampires she Mm -hmm. grew up with humans Mm -hmm. so she doesn't know jack shit about being a vampire she's like the worst vampire to ever vampire i think she even says exactly (laughs) that she's like so we have somebody who's never had their blood sucked before and me the worst vampire this should go swimmingly right (laughs) uh so then she's talking to her brother about it like hey what's what what's this about he's like don't just don't talk to me about it don't ever do it again it's it's like a mom (laughs) having to like listen to their kid describe like masturbating for the first time they're like no 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 <laughs> yes. nope no 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 we don't do don't, that we don't it's, do that <laughs> it's it's bad for you you'll go blind <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but apparently it's supposed to like potentially form bonds and, and like uh, weird attachments or whatever mm-hmm which is like hey man that's already happened we're, we're yeah, past that they, they've passed that they already like each other yeah well and the the other thing is she's not only uh, the worst vampire, if you will, um, like her only experience with drinking blood is drinking it through a straw from a blood bag. And so the concept of even drinking from somebody's vein is like, what? Right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of revolted by it. They're like, ew, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then instinct takes over, though, and she manages to do it just fine. She mm-hmm. does. Uh, yeah. She comes out on top, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> the other interesting change that she made is to werewolves and mates because mates don't happen to everyone. And I think that, that there are plenty of books where that happens too. But the way Lo is describing a, a mate, it's not something that both sides feel. Like just one of them could get the like uh, mate attraction thing to the other person and the other person is just like yeah bro i don't i don't feel that and instead of both of them getting it it was just an interesting well i I kept wondering if this was i mean i'm sure it's happened before but i don't think that's also the norm with you having a mate i felt very much like he was trying to talk himself through the reality that she's never going to have that same experience as him. Sure. Um, Cause a lot of, he would say so many things throughout the book that were about her to her without her being able to understand that that's what was happening. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like he needed to like, he needed to desperately voice these things to her without her understanding. Yeah. Which is a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, but I get his reasoning, right? He doesn't mm-hmm. want to tell her that she is his mate and i'm sure at first he was probably freaked out about it like oh a vampire why am i getting the mate feels vibes for a vampire we are hated enemies Mm -hmm. but then also because he knows a lot about her from just learning about her past and reading her file as she says but he doesn't want to put this like obligation on her when her whole life has just been being trapped by obligations Mm -hmm. (sighs) which is a nice thing to do i suppose well and the thing about talking about how Allie hazelwood has changed this a little bit is that it feels like she put her her science touch on it right where she never outright says it but biologically a species will choose to evolve rather than die so it makes sense that they would start developing these like biological bonds with one another to try and force evolution like between the werewolf and the vampire yeah oh yeah yeah or or werewolves and humans right Right. um so it kind of it it's the other way of looking at why have they not hooked up before it kind of makes you wonder if previously from an evolutionary standpoint there was only disgust and now they're starting to like get to this point where they do find each other attractive because biology right i did think it was interesting also she made the change of well vampires are not born with much in the way of sweat glands 
And so the way that she smells is complicated, but also her version of, of scenting is through his blood. Like she can smell people's blood in them. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I did think that was kind of interesting. Yeah. And then also she eats peanut butter, which apparently is supposed to be revolting for vampires Mm -hmm. to eat. And yet she still did it. It was her dirty secret as she ate peanut butter. And I'm still trying to figure out how she processes the peanut butter in her body. Because that was never explained. Well, it's it's never implied that vampires don't have the ability to digest things. I mean, they are drinking blood, so they would have at least some way to break that down into the components that they need, right? So... She says she can eat a little, so I'm guessing she can't eat a big steak dinner, but something like smooth or maybe even crunchy peanut butter, her body can break it down a little bit. Well, it makes me wonder if, from the vampire biology uh, uh, standpoint, if it's that her stomach is, uh, their stomachs are just very small. So the idea of masticating food and your stomach acids being able to break that down, that's not, they're not evolutionarily built for that. True, I could see that, yeah. And I I would, my understanding, and maybe this is just my head canon, but my understanding of it was that vampires all could eat human food and be fine. It just wouldn't be the a pleasant experience for them, so they don't. I, I would kind of assume they also maybe wouldn't get what they need from it. Right. Like, nutrition-wise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They also make it seem like it's kind of just shameful because vampires don't see eating for enjoyment as a thing. It's true. And so they just kind of think it's revolting culturally as well. Mm-hmm. Well, she does also say when Lo is asking her about eating, because he's also kind of like, what the fuck of vampires eating food? This is weird. Uh, she also says that they don't have the right teeth for it. Mm-hmm. I could see masticating with fangs being weird. Right. Yeah. They don't have like molars or something. Well, and the way we eat, we have to grind everything. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. So I would imagine fangs would get in the way of that. Yeah. But yeah. So it, 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 it was enjoyable to read something that was a little bit different and it felt well thought out. Right. I've read somewhere they're like, I just wanted this to be different because they're special. They sparkle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay okay stephanie okay no these vampires didn't sparkle they do burn in the sun but not Mm -hmm. like oh my god one ray of sun and we're Mm -hmm. flames but like a really extreme sunburn all the time right like extreme photosensitivity if you're a human Mm -hmm. being kind of thing she does like smolder it they have to it takes a a little longer because she does do that when she goes out to save lo's sister yeah we should probably talk about is it J L Moreland, J E J L E L E Moreland. We should talk about L E Moreland. Liliana. Yeah. So the whole reason that Misery agrees to marry Lo is when she was searching through Serena's apartment after she goes missing. She finds this scrap of paper in their unique kind of coded language with each other, and it reads out L.E. Moreland. And so she hears Lo Moreland. Why it just, why Serena writing his name down in her planner or her journal, whatever it was. Only to find out that that's not Lo. It's Liliana or Anna is what they call her. Lo's little sister who is seven. Mm-hmm. Well, there's some debate about that. <laughs> um She's six going on seven, and she likes to flip-flop on that one. That's right. She always says she's seven, but holds up six fingers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Lo says she's better at lying with her words, but not with her fingers. (laughs) Insane. (laughs) This Um, finger comes out. (laughs) Just can't lie. (laughs) Um, I love the way that Anna was written. It's pretty common to have these, like, children in books that are used to show one character soft side. So Lo is this, like, hard... Um, shell of a man like you can't get to know him he's always very like rough exterior cold and stuff except around Anna at least from Misery's perspective around Anna he's like warm and inviting and always trying to take care of her Um, so the the plot device or the like whatever you would call Anna is common but I still love it and I still love that she attached herself to Misery or in a way that feels 
very realistic. Well, it also shows misery coming around to a little softer side despite her every thought process and her every want. Because, like, she's pretty cold to Anna, but, like, Anna's just like, nah. I genuinely love people who don't understand kids that have kids that cling to them. Yeah. Real life or in books, I find it amusing every single time. The way they'll be, like, playing fetch with a kid. They'll be like, go go get your teddy bear. (laughs) Get the fuck away from me. And the kid's like, yeah! Oh, God, I love that shit. And it's (laughs) It's totally what happened in this book. Like, she's like, I don't fucking want you anywhere near me. And Anna's like, you know what I'm going to do? She's like, can we cuddle? Right near you. (laughs) Which, I mean, kids do that. Yeah. I didn't do that. I had too much anxiety as a child. But, like, there are plenty of kids that, especially when there's a new person in the house, yeah. it's like, this is a new person. New person means new stuff. I feel like there's typically two kid reactions to new people. One, hide behind mom's legs. Yes. That was, or, um, you're my new best friend, and I need to show you all of my toys. So Correct. this one is Molly. This one <laughs> is Francis. Um, and that's George Bigglesworth. Don't worry about it. Over there is Josiah Farmson. Josiah Farmson. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be here long, don't worry. Oh, Josiah Farmson. <laughs> I'm going to make Pappy regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Josiah Farmson. <laughs> For Josiah Farmson! <laughs> uh yeah and i i love that misery was just like no child stop uh and and she didn't know how old she was she's like she's either three or 13 the thing is i know people who are exactly that they like their intelligence when it comes to children is so low they're just like i don't know it can walk so i don't i don't know what age it is now (laughs) right uh a little off topic but my favorite is Pappy because he's just like, I don't know, it's talking age. And I was like, okay. So he's like four. And I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So I did really like the scene, you know, despite misery, not wanting anything to do with this child, there is a scene where I think everybody is all like wolfing out for the full moon or whatever. And, they leave Anna in the house to be protected because people, some people can't really control themselves very well during the shift. Uh, a lot of people can, but there are certain people that have issues with this. So they want to make sure that Anna's protected and Anna gets scared and crawls in bed with misery. And then when Lo comes to check on Anna, she like whips a knife out of nowhere. A like, steak knife that a, she found in the kitchen. Like she was just like, this is my child, bitch. Touch like, my baby. Right. And it's it's a pinnacle moment of you're like, oh, she really got in there. Mm-hmm. She she rooted into your feelers and, and lodged herself there. Is that before or after she runs outside to save Anna? After. It is after. Yeah. Which, which is probably something to talk about in and of itself because it kind of shapes everything that happens afterwards. Mm-hmm. Right. So M- Misery is not wanted there. Everybody's kind of treating her like shit, it, kind of except for Lo. But even he's like trying really hard to keep her at a distance right and then the other person who's good with her is mick i believe is that yeah. his name yeah. yes but he's not that good with her at that point it's right. it's later after basically everybody goes from i don't care if you die except that the alliance depends on it but after she goes out of her way to try and save anna suddenly everybody's like oh maybe there is some good things about you right whoa that's that's controversial i know but whoa so uh she has this confrontation with this teenage werewolf named max um and he's calling her all these like awful names and saying that you know vampires killed her killed his family which is probably true and she's doing her best to like avoid the fight until he finally lunges at her and she's like okay bitch yeah me and my bestie took self-defense classes and i'm gonna take you um and she kind of does um so their assumption is that she was gonna bite him and all this that and the other thing so they already didn't have a good opinion of her and then she like their opinion shifts to being even worse like she could bite any of us at any point and so when she sees max like toddling off with this kid um and no one's paying attention because she's watching from their barbecue from <laughs> sadly from the window and you're like oh that's really sad <laughs> that is really sad <laughs> <laughs> but the sun is up so she can't go out there right 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 well i think she said she could be in the shade 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if she was like covered up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she she sees that none of them are going after her. And th- she's like, okay, any minute they're going to realize the kid is gone, right? Mm-hmm. And they, d- from her perspective, don't. Mm-hmm. And so she rushes out there barefoot, chasing after them in the forest and is like, you better fucking leave that kid alone, bro. <laughs> And all the werewolves come out and we're like, could you stay out of it? Because they were performing this like sting operation to see who wants to try and kidnap Anna and why. Right. But, you know, if you don't let everybody in on it, you're eventually going to have somebody who fucks it up. Well, and I I just don't think any of them thought she would care enough. Right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Or even be conscious because it is in the middle of, well, it's towards, it's towards evening. It's, yeah. it's getting towards the end of the day, but the sun was still up. But I, yeah, I, I legit don't think that they thought she would care enough to be like, what the fuck? And she's like, no, see, child. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't get children. I don't really want them around me all that much, but she was not afraid of me, even though I came into her house and stole her bedroom. Well, and. In- in regardless of her being away from vampire culture it is still ingrained in her that ch- children are valuable yep. right um because they can't have many so she's looking at it also probably from that perspective of like holy shit you're just gonna let a full ass child escape what is wrong <laughs> with you <laughs> yeah so she quote unquote rescues the kid even though everybody was actually watching what was happening they were mm-hmm. just faking it and then they're kind of like which all right you're, i'm you still not cool it. with that they use no. a child as bait like i don't but she does chew them out for it she's oh, like yeah. the fuck were you thinking and i was like well i needed to find out and she's like a child right you don't use children as bait right your sibling yeah um but it shifts everything for everyone like right uh her relationship with Lo changes. Her relationships with the other werewolves change. They're suddenly like, oh, there's there's a person in there and not just fangs. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, I we knew she wasn't actually in danger, but you didn't know that. And you were going to get yourself killed in order to protect somebody that you're not supposed to really care about. Mm-hmm. And so then they actually start including her in at least some things. She gets supervised access to technology. Well, and it's clear that the other werewolves know that she's Lowe's mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even before he officially confesses it. Like, I feel like anybody who's ever read any kind of werewolf romance was like, uh, for, at the wedding, we're like, so they're mates. Right. Understood. Yep. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, I was. I was just like, Lo, just tell her. Just well, tell her. There was like one line, one like throwaway line. Uh, uh, so he attacks, not attacks her at the wedding, but kind of. Like, gets all up in her space and is like, why do you smell like this? Right. Um, and I was like, ah, I see. So this is this is a mate thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, then his rationale um, later on, but not too far down the road, is, oh, well, they did something to tamper with the way you smell. And that's why. that it's, You're not really my mate. Something is wrong. Yeah, because vampires know anything about mates which right. he finds out as misery asks him so many questions so many questions but i would be asking the same questions right. like i was just like yes ask him that one also follow up with this one <laughs> <laughs> shifting gears a little bit i love that low could not technology no oh so badly <laughs> he's like a boomer uh, to be fair, I know people our age who cannot technology. I, so worse, I, get it. I know people younger than us that can't technology. And I'm like, your whole life is technology. <laughs> how do you not know how to do this? <laughs> yeah. So he's he's going to go into the the enemy werewolves, the <laughs> the mate of the, ec- the alpha that he killed and try to get into their system and like try to hack into their system or whatever and misery is just like no well you can't just magically learn how to do this what are you doing i love that alex who is like a terrified of misery for the longest time is still looking at her with like please help me (laughs) help me i love that when she walks in lo's literally about to punch the computer and alex is like no no don't do that and she's like percussive ma- maintenance really isn't gonna work in this situation <laughs> well because lo is trying to follow alex's instructions on like how to how to write code 
because uh, you'll have to once he gets there and gets onto a computer have to be able to like go through and, and write these uh, commands into the computer to do what they needed to do and <laughs> Lois just like I'll figure it out when I get there and I'm like no you no, wait no 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 you wait he's literally doing the one finger typing right and I'm like Ugh. <laughs> I can't take this and here's the thing I am admittedly when you look at my technological ability I don't have a ton I can absolutely get by I do not do one finger typing I figured out with help how to edit this podcast you know i can do things but i am definitely more on the like layman side of things and even i was just like no sir you know figure out in the in the moment Mm -hmm. like i'm much better at you at this than you are and i couldn't figure it out in the moment right like that you didn't actually need to have full-on tech people there being like bro you can't do this you just <laughs> literally probably anna could have come in and done better right yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so bad oh my gosh so misery then is like just take me with you <laughs> just just take me with you i'm your wife it's a good excuse mm-hmm. right and he's like uh, i don't know if that's a good idea for a lot of reasons that he doesn't communicate to her yeah and then he waits until they land the plane which apparently he pilots and i'm like okay <laughs> so the you way, can handle life. those buttons but a computer screen's too hard right. explain make it make sense low <laughs> by the way she had a line when they got to the airport and they were getting on to this like pli- private plane she like they pull up and she goes oh honey are we rich i was like oh my god i love her so much yeah (laughs) yes and (laughs) can we talk about that scenting scene that's what i was gonna go into yeah (laughs) because one of the things he doesn't describe to her is that he's going to have to mark her or Mm -hmm. send her so that like everybody knows that she is his which i mean seemed a bit excessive you know he's bringing her there they're married uh it it seems yeah whatever um well, he does a lot of things where he's like, don't worry about it. It's a werewolf thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but he waits until they land the plane there to be like, all right, we got to do this now. Well, and she's so distracted. He's, she's like, oh, these other werewolves are coming. We got to gotta mentally prepare. And he's like, so, Misery, I'm going to need your permission. And she's like, yeah, yeah, do whatever you want with these limbs. I don't give a shit. <laughs> there are werewolves coming. <laughs> right. And he's like, no, ma'am. <laughs> please listen to me <laughs> which i mean from her perspective i would have been like that too like okay like all yeah, right just fine, whatever let's, let's get this over with i don't know like, what you gotta do you like, gotta like rub up on me like a dog fine fine like, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but then when he does do it i was breathless yes yes <laughs> I had to put, after that, I read that scene, I had to, like, put the book down for a minute, and I was like, oh. (laughs) (laughs) They don't actually do anything, but it was hot. Uh, Well, I mean, he does put his face all up on her neck. Yes. And then spins her around and, like, bites her neck. Yes. Uh, Not enough to break the skin, but, like, enough to get his his business all up on her. Yes. And I'm just like, huh. Yes, oh. and and is fully grinding behind her. Yeah, and I'm like, <sighs> I was not ready. <laughs> now just imagine you both read this; it was read to me, and because <laughs> <laughs> they had they had dual narrators too. Mm, for so. what? Just occasionally his so like his actual like speaking interesting oh it was true it was truly duetted yes Ooh. Oh, now i'm upset i didn't listen to this <laughs> now i might have to <laughs> yeah the, in that moment i was like huh, i need a five minute tiktok break <laughs> i was surprised at how much that like affected me i was like what <laughs> they did what what do i expect coming forward i i don't know i don't know and then they followed it up with another scene where they were like bitch you're horny uh, the biting scene? Yes. Yes. Like, they give us a little, like, break, a little preamble, if you will, where they're like, tense dinner. This is super ox. 
we're gonna you're gonna pretend to go eat now and like that's that's all the break you get in between <laughs> right mm-hmm. uh in between the whole like oh no they're fine the, the the werewolf guards are going to find us in the study where i'm hacking into the computer kiss me it works in movies <laughs> i get her logic though yeah. oh i get it <laughs> well i just love that it, while that was happening they were like the commentary on it is this is really fucking cheesy this is not going to work yes <laughs> But all I kept picturing until they went fully into the bite was like that part in Clue where they're like half the dead body. Yes. <laughs> they're just like moving the limbs. And I was like, it's a sound strategy. <laughs> if it works in Clue, it'll work anywhere else. I mean, yes. <laughs> Which low Lowe's logic makes a lot of sense of like, we told them you're going to go feed and werewolves don't know jack shit about vampires the same way vampires right. don't know jack shit about werewolves so just bite me they'll buy it it'll all make sense and they and they do they're and right. they're horrified they're like oh my god right <laughs> yeah. oh my and again these these werewolves immediately went back to the others and were like you're never going to believe <laughs> yes what i just saw and they're all like come on come on come on come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was very much. Let's all go run and see this terrible thing. Oh God! Oh. And then, like the the mate of the wor- the alpha he killed comes in, and she's just like, "Well, you know, if you've watched Hamilton and that that moment where um Thomas Jefferson finds out that Hamilton like uh cheated on his wife, and he just goes, oh, "My God, <laughs> my God, <laughs> <laughs> yeah." yeah. <laughs> You could have just kept that at home. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Diddy digs. My God. My that God. is now going to be a a way of describing something for me. I hear it in my head all of the time, like when I'm reading books or even in real life, I just hear hear, My God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, this is a moment for that. The the one that sticks with me forever is like anytime I do something that uh, is a little bit embarrassing, I just hear Pride is not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh just a glimpse into the crazy that is this i am now going to randomly text wiggles pride is not the word i'm looking for uh, <laughs> me and pappy constantly go like whenever we're debating doing something or, or something happens we just look at each other and go okay so we're doing this yes. yeah that is what that is the one that i do a, a lot in my brain Um, okay so we're doing this back to the biting scene though yes it's so hot that she actually like orgasms yes like doesn't he pick her up and like hold her against a wall while she's like not not gnawing but like feeding on him well and he's obviously having a real good time too oh yeah yeah uh like at one point he he says more take more take what you need like he's like begging her to continue biting and he's she's like yeah okay (laughs) I wasn't in. planning on stopping. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and then after that, she doesn't have to feed for a week, and she usually has to eat every day. Yeah. Oof. That, that was powerful. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And it's funny. So before that, when they're doing the like peanut butter scene after yep. she's been burned and everything, uh, and she confesses that vampires don't eat for pleasure. He goes, "Well, what do vampires do for pleasure?" And then, like, so it comes back around, right? And like, yeah. it's just like. I love that. I love yeah. that for me. I love that journey for me. <laughs> um, but then things kind of don't like get sexual again for a while because they have to share the bed and that that they're staying in at this woman's mansion complex, whatever. And I believe that's where she like helps him fall asleep by like playing with his hair or something. Well, and it, that's after she starts asking him all the questions about his mate. And right. so they have this conversation that he clearly doesn't want to have where he keeps like saying, misery, stop. Um, and she's like, okay, but no, I need you to explain it to me because it doesn't make sense. Yes. So on 201, the speech that Lowe gives to her is um, talking about if the his mate doesn't have the mate bond or whatever back to him. And he's just saying, I would take anything she chooses to give me, the tiniest fraction or her entire world. I would take her for a single knowing Oh, God. I would take her for a single night knowing that I'll lose her by morning and I would hold on to her and never let go. I would take her healthy or sick or tired or angry or strong and it would be my fucking privilege. 
And I'm like, huh. <gasps> and they wonder why we fucking read this shit. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is, like, where's the mystery? It's right there. Yeah. Just do better. God damn. Oh. And then Can you, you imagine got... someone saying that to you? <laughs> oh. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I can't. I, I'm. I married a version of that, so must be fucking. Nice. <laughs> yeah, must be fucking nice, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> so yes, actually, I can. But you know, you get guys on the apps being like, "Want a dick pic?" Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I stopped trying. I get nothing. My, I have my book boyfriends. Uh, yeah, book boyfriends are phenomenally better. Yeah, yeah. And occasionally, I get on the to- a kiss on the top of the head from your husband because he's like a brother to me. He is very physically affectionate. Yes. <laughs> with everyone. Uh, but I think you're the only person he kisses. Oh. Like that. It definitely, he did that the other day at D&D. Like he walked by you, kissed you on the top of the head, and then walked by me and kissed me on the top of the head. And I was just like, oh. And I'm not a physically affectionate person. So it was just a little. Oh. I think he's done that to you too, though. Not on the top of the head. I get, I get cheek kisses. Oh. Oh. Mm. I'll let him know that you guys appreciate the kisses. I'm sure he would love to give them more. I don't need increase them. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't, need, I don't need him to know always. <laughs> yeah. You can keep that to yourself. Uh, the frequency is appropriate. We don't need to get into pretty bird territory. <laughs> it's too much. Too much touching. <sighs> yeah. So, but yeah. So it's this like very touching moment and she does She's missing the fact that he's saying this to her about her, which is like constantly happening in this book. I know. I'm like, figure it out, woman. I'm like, oh, which to be fair, there's a reason for that. And yes. the reason for that is back at the wedding, the human ambassador. No, senator, senator, governor, person thing. Ass, uh, ass face. Mm-hmm. Um, who is uh, another key point was not voted back in. So there's going to be a new a human in charge and that's fucking with everybody's everything right that's how we get from rather than children collateral we have adult collateral now yeah because because they uh, she's not about the the children swap thing right but anyway misery hears from this fuckwad that the werewolf that's coming to stay with the vampires is Lowe's mate mm-hmm. which I, I i was a little confused about so they're swapping important people i got that but why does Misery have to marry Lo, but Gabby, the werewolf that's going to go with the vampires, she's not marrying anybody. Why Why is there this marriage, but there's no other marriage? That was a point of confusion for me. I was like, but why get married, though? Why aren't you just collateral like you were before? I, uh, I, yeah, they don't make that entirely clear. It may have had something to do with like werewolf culture where because he married her, she is 100% under his protection and it would be considered an act of treason to try to harm her. I also right, but just like... kind of had a flash of memory where the reason they had to pretend that she was his mate was because they don't know that Anna's his sister. And so he, to their knowledge, does not have any family members. Right. So they... They didn't have anybody. The werewolves didn't have anybody important enough, right, to give to the vampires. So that's why they lied and told them that Gabby was his mate. Which is why Misery thinks the entire time that Lo is pining after Gabby, who's right. with the vampires for a year, right. But it still doesn't explain why Misery had to marry Lo. I don't get it. <laughs> I think there's more vested interest in him protecting her than is the idea. Yeah. And it proves as a cover to humans that they're not really do they're not doing collateral because they, this is a shift from previously the collateral um, alliance arrangement was between humans and vampires. Right. And it's a, the humans that don't want to continue this collateral thing. And so I think it's the cover of, oh, we're just having this vampire werewolf ceremony because we're forming this alliance and that's all it is. This isn't collateral again. And so I don't think it's necessarily known to the humans that Gabby is also collateral. Oh. Also, the, this is actually a older tradition that they used to do until the final wedding there was like a mass murder Mm -hmm. in the wedding which both part both the werewolves and the the vampires have a different perspective on yes but essentially it came down to one wanted revenge over the other and it was going to happen no matter what yeah but yeah 
So it, it does complicate Misery and Lowe's relationship because he's not willing to be forthcoming and honest. She doesn't know enough about anything because she's been a part of all the wrong worlds for yeah. a long time and honestly doesn't care. She is focused all her energy around Serena. That's her life. That's the only person she cares about. She's like, the only person who actually gives a shit about me is the person I'm going to find. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. When you Mm -hmm. have only one person, you're going to completely change your life to find them because they're missing. Well, and it's it's to the point of being almost a little bit toxic because that's the big fight that they have before Serena goes missing is that she's telling her you have to get a life you have to go pursue things other than being my best friend that's not a life right you have to care about something other than me right and she says it in kind of a vicious way Mm -hmm. the way you do in fights when you just like say the mean thing to be mean Right. right well and especially if you're as good of friends as they are every friend knows the thing that the other person can say to just devastate them right like i could be horrible to both of you if I wanted to I do not want to but we all know that shit Mm -hmm. and she said it right and so that's the other thing is that's kind of conflating and and confusing everything that's happening is she doesn't know truly that something bad happened to Serena for all she knows they're just she doesn't want to be contacted right Mm -hmm. and so and and everybody keeps throwing that in her face and she's like no I at my core know that that's not what happened right but having even that little sliver of doubt they keep throwing it in her face Mm -hmm. right because serena might disappear for a couple of days but it's been months Mm -hmm. and it it's also complicated for her and lo because he eventually does confess to her that his sister anna is half werewolf half uh human but i i want to talk about misery and lo as a couple okay okay so I, one of the things I love about Lo, in, in spite of him being a lying liar, <laughs> is that he's he's just so accommodating to who she is and not in a judgy way, but he's like, oh, you, you want to do things this way? You want to sleep in a closet? Let me join you in the closet. It'll be fine. <laughs> Oh, uh, I told you I wouldn't show you my wolf. Well, now I'm going to join you in the closet as a wolf and we're going to have cuddles. Like, he just he's like, I'm going to meet you where you're at. And it's sweet and nice. I love the wolf meeting because she, like, walks out because it was the it was the night that everybody changed. Mm-hmm. And so, like, he had taken Anna and put her to bed and everything, you know, and then she walked out later and there's a big white wolf sleeping right outside her bedroom door Mm -hmm. that's after she gets poisoned Mm -hmm. oh that is after she gets poisoned and she's like low is it low and he's just like pushing her back into the bedroom like no no go back you go back to sleep now no you sleep you sleep still (laughs) i've decided (laughs) (laughs) it's just so funny the way he's just like she's like yeah yeah i get it all right are you low though (laughs) Um, but Lo also, again, getting back to the closet thing in his wolf form is like, okay, I see, I I see you don't like the bed and he grabs the pillow and the blanket Mm -hmm. and like puts it all in there for her. Mm -hmm. And then she gets all in and (laughs) I just love, I love that she looks at this big wolf, this huge wolf and is like, did you, did you want to be in here too? And he's like, yes, I did. Yes. Thank you. Thank (laughs) you. I would like to be all up in your business. She's like, can I pet you? Yes. 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 More of that, please. I encourage it. Yes. It's it's like the owl bear in uh, BG3. He's like, ooh, more. More. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. I also uh, appreciate... um, the the bath scene which is a few handfuls of scenes prior to that um when they're still after the uh data from the other werewolves after the biting yes scenting yes and you could tell like all of the people reading are like this man is trying not to lose his mind right (laughs) and misery is like whatever man it's covered with bubbles you don't even (laughs) want me it's fine and he's like are you decent (laughs) Yep. As she moves the bubbles over. Yeah. And he's like, but you're not. But you're not. You're naked. (laughs) Please help me. Everything is covered. He's like, how, 
How am I supposed to survive this? <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a very hot scene, though, because of course he can't. He can't just be like, "Oh God, you're not," and walk out of the room. He has to be like, "Well, I came in here for a reason, so I'm gonna walk over and sit down next to the bathtub and talk to you." Yes. Well, and then she starts splashing him, and yeah. he grabs her ankle, and of course, he's like. I'm just gonna keep rubbing you under the water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought it was going to get spicier. I was like, I oh. did too. And which oh. I feel robbed because I, girls, you know me. I love a good bath scene. A spicy <laughs> bathtub scene. Oh, fucking love it. <laughs> Didn't he like touch her though? In no, that scene? Not there. Not, okay. not it, where it not, counted. Not overtly sexually. He was, rub- he, he was rubbing her like. Is there she's a, rubbing her feet and her ankle and her leg, but never went that high. Is there a later bathtub scene where he does that? I don't think. I swear to God, <laughs> she was in the bath when he fingered her. What? <laughs> Maybe I read a different book than you. Oh, you mean the second bathtub scene? Right. When she's sick and mm-hmm. then he draws her a bath. Mm-hmm. And they kind of do the same thing, only it goes a little bit further. Well, and he's he's determined it has to be, the bath has to be just right. So he's got yes. the right soap. He's got the right, like, bubble ratio. And he's like, in you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and is he just sitting outside? He's just sitting outside the bathtub again, like, talking to her and, like, touching her, mm-hmm. bathing her. Yes. I he love is a good bathing, bathing scene. I do love a good bathing yes. scene. Yes. Yes. And he's like using the washcloth and she's like, you don't have to use a washcloth. <laughs> that's okay. So I, that's one of the things I've seen highly debated um, recently on TikTok of like whether or not you should use a washcloth or not. And I was like, it doesn't really matter. The whole point was to get him to touch her with his bare hands. <laughs> like, I feel right. like you're missing the point. It's like, it doesn't matter if it's a, a towel, loofah, whatever. The point is there's a barrier in the way. Exactly. <laughs> And then she, like, encourages him mm-hmm. to, like, touch lower mm-hmm. and more sensitive areas. And he's like, we got to take this to the bedroom, miss ma'am. Uh, but they don't. Then nothing happens. Well. I mean, he fingers her in the bath. Mm-hmm. But then that's, like, the end of it. And I'm like, God damn it, Allie Hazelwood. <laughs> <laughs> she, she knows how to tease a bitch. That's I for was, sure. So since we're talking about the sexy times, Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that comes up is Lo has a knot, Mm -hmm. right? We've read this before. We read the Gargoyles Mm. book, uh, which we're talking about Deceived by the Gargoyles by Lillian Lark, which we just call Gargoyles. Mm -hmm. Um, Because we love it. It's the only Gargoyles that matter. Correct. And um, so (laughs) they're like going to town one time and he's like, listen, we are not compatible. This isn't going to work. And like lets her feel it um and then we get to nearly the end of the goddamn book and i'm like ali hazelwood if you wrote nodding into this but don't actually give it to me i will f- mm-hmm. i will lose my shit i will throw a temper tantrum i swear to god well okay i want to back up to the scene where he does let her feel it because yeah. This is this is classic Allie Hazelwood, which is acknowledging that sex is awkward and weird. Yeah. And that it's going to be complicated. And so naturally, he's like trying to explain it to her about how they can never really like go further because he's like, biologically, you're not set up to handle this. Um, or so he thinks. And so... It's him wrong. <laughs> it's true. And so he... He's like, okay, let's let's just slow it down and let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. Um, although he was the one who was being aggressively fast, right? Leading up to it, like he was like, let's go, and she's like, okay, but like I want to do it for real. And he's like, misery. Everything we've been doing is sex. Yes. It doesn't have to be this one thing. But Which, I, I actually really appreciated that mm-hmm. line. I'm like, yes, it is not like everything it is that they've been doing is a realm of sex like you you don't i get angry sometimes when people don't acknowledge sexual activity for what it is Mm -hmm. right the penetrative sex is not the only type of sex right Mm -hmm. and he's like i don't want to hurt you right and so i'm happy with us just doing this yeah i don't need anything more from you it's it's fine and and she's like you know trying to understand why they can't just 
have sex from her perspective, right? Well, the other layer on top of it is she's a virgin. Mm -hmm. So she, I can understand like her being, wanting to go there because she's like, I've never had anybody Mm -hmm. that this was like a reality for us. So why are you stopping me? Right. I can finally do the thing. (laughs) And I generally don't like the like virgin thing Mm -hmm. very much. Um, I actually did not mind it because there was a logical reason for the fact that she was. Right. Like, it's not that she just, oh, I was waiting for the perfect man. No, it's because the vampires, because they sent her away to be collateral, all see her as a traitor, even though, you know, she had no choice in all of this. The humans would know if they were touching her, if she that she was a vampire because she is multiple degrees lower in body temperature than a human well not only that but she says at one point she's like i didn't think i didn't i wouldn't be comfortable doing it with a human because i would be lying to them the entire time exactly and then werewolves and vampires are supposed to be kill on sight to each other Mm -hmm. and so like i i understand and i appreciate the fact that there is a very logical reason why she has not ever had sex well and i also appreciate that lo is not super experienced either right and the experience that he does have is in stark contrast where he's lived in this uh other country where werewolves and humans interact a lot more and so that's how and vampires yeah like they all kind of live in harmony they still are uh, vampires are a little separated from everyone not separated they're they mingle just fine Mm -hmm. but like they don't really hang very much with other people well and lo is you know aversion to having his not because apparently Mm -hmm. that only happens if you find your mate if you even have one that's actually a fairly common thing in romance novels when they have the not is that it only happens for their mate right so they're in the scene where he slows it down And then he gets off, she gets off, he gets off, and then he, like, has her touch the knot as it inflates, essentially. Oh, when he, like, brought her hand down, I was like, oh, yes, please. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and he says something really sweet, like, he's like, oh, I'm going to think about you uh anytime this happens from now on kind of thing yeah um and she still doesn't get it like, i know she still is not putting together. Like, okay you're totally missing two plus two equals four like i don't uh <laughs> honey you're a smart girl figure it out right but the one thing she's not smart in is she has no social intelligence oh no right. so it makes sense that she keeps missing all of the cues where mm-hmm. we as the reader are like bitch how do you not get it well and they she does finally put two and two together like it's just so so, and i feel like that's one of the like catalyst moments where she's like wait a minute wait a minute and so then they go to um meet up with her brother who she's been having conversations with in the tongue is what they refer to it as yeah which is just the vampire language yeah which i will say i loved the way that um Owen her brother and her had this like secret language which isn't the tongue that's just the vampire language but they had this like distinct way of talking to each other when they wanted to like communicate secretly Mm -hmm. which is to like almost tell stories that are fake to Mm -hmm. each other to indicate like this thing I'm trying to tell it to you but I'm going to tell it to you in this very like obtuse way Mm -hmm. and like they both I thought it was a really interesting take on the like twin language Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm yeah and so they end up he's like we need to we need to meet we need to talk some shit's going down that i can't even tell you in our secret not secret language right right and so they go to meet and she sees him interact with gabby and she's like low that's your fucking mate that's how you talk to your mate and he said he uh she mentions like what she's been studying in school and immediately after they're in the car driving away from it and she's like what did gabby study in school and he's like i don't know and she's like what did i study in school and he's like listen off all the way down to a minor and she's like wait wait hold the hold the phone right eventually her like intellectual brain is like why would he not know what his mate is studying in school especially because he he first asks her like oh what are you studying if it was like law or something like that and gabby's like no electrical engineering right so not even something that's similar no yeah that you could easily mistake 
And when Misery asks him about it, it he just like has all of the details. And she's like, wait a minute. this Something is starting to not act up. Right. Add up. Right. Which leads us to the confrontation scene. The third act breakup. Yeah. I didn't like it. I didn't like it either. I wanted to punch him. I was like, you gaslight. I literally was start uh, screaming at the book. And I was like, you gaslighting motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so Misery takes him to her old apartment. They get I hot and go heavy. Wow, wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get hot and heavy. Still not nodding. And she's like we're mate i am your mate Mm -hmm. like she finally it like confronts him on it and he's like no you don't understand and he keeps using this fucking phrase of like stop talking about where things that you don't understand right which is just me yeah oh yeah i was like i was like i would smack you upside the back of the head so hard i don't even care if it would get me killed just be like boom dust stop it and that was the point where i didn't understand why he's doing this anymore because like up until then he probably was confused himself Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. why am i getting this vibe for a vampire and then i don't want to trap her into this or make her feel obligated to me because of this Mm -hmm. and at that point it's almost like lo had stopped realizing what was happening with her like dude she's been all up in your shit for the last however long just fucking tell her right doesn't she deserve to know yeah right and it's the way that he goes about it is by basically saying like this is just a fling yeah this like and now it's over How because you, you made it weird your relationship yeah sir yeah and after he's already told her things like i'm gonna think of you every time i right yeah. like oh i was so mad at this man i was like sir i'm gonna punch you in the nut i swear to god uh-huh. <laughs> Oh, it was just mean. It was like from top to bottom. It was just mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, I've I've read many of fights in in romance novels. There, you know, that shit happens. This one hurt me mm-hmm. emotionally. I was like, uh, sir, and also there was no reason for it. Yeah. Well, and for me, like energy wise, the book never recovers. Yeah. Yeah. It just it we we rush towards a speedy resolution to everything that happens. She gets kidnapped. Uh, by his by pack mate. Mick, who is the one one of the few werewolves that she thought liked her, yeah. and I, he did. He's just also under duress um, because his son has been kidnapped, and she finally finds best friend. Yay! Best friend. Best friends forever. Let's fight some werewolves. Yeah. So vampires. They're not fighting the werewolves. Well, and also the werewolves. to get out. Oh yeah. Well yeah. Yeah, they don't know that they're not fighting the werewolves. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So then we find out that Serena is half werewolf, half human, which was pretty heavily foreshadowed. I mm-hmm. would say. Mm-hmm. Well, it, you're trying to understand where why is she so interested in this little girl who's half va- right. or half werewolf, half uh, human, well, especially because her r- reporting was financial. So it doesn't make sense, right? Well, and the addedness that you know enough about her because you have learned about her through Misery's eyes that she would never involve a child in Mm -hmm. something like this. She's like, I don't care what she was researching. The moment she realized that there was a child involved, she wouldn't have reported on it. Right. Right. So why is Serena still looking into it? Right. Yeah. And they do have this really touching, like it felt very realistic to to a friend like reconciling conversation yeah. where she, she's like i didn't know if you would even like look for me because i was so mean to you the last time we spoke and they're, they're like oh no <laughs> <laughs> right it was yeah. that felt very natural <laughs> i do like that from that point on as soon as serena is back in misery's life serena is also the person who is always with her mm-hmm. it's not mm-hmm. like Oh, Lo, like she finds out that Lo is also there and he's going to save Misery and he's going to save Serena from her dad. Yeah. Who is the kidnapping ass face. But um, I mean, no one was shocked on that end. I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, of course yeah. it's fuck face. Yeah. No. yeah. But when after that happens and we can talk about that, but after that happens and Misery is like recovering and after Serena like recovers from her shifting it, it's Serena that's always with her and I thought that also felt really accurate like mm-hmm. yeah I get you have this relationship with Lo that's may or wherever it stands who knows but the person that should be comforting you and that should be with 
you like the entire time is your best friend who you thought could have been dead for the last several months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it makes sense that it's only with Serena that she chooses to return to where the werewolves right. mm-hmm. are that she's sort of like, I don't know where I stand with Lo, but I know where I stand with her. And so yeah. if she's going there, so am I. Mm-hmm. And it's logical, too, that Serena would then go there because she needs help to understand changes. She, mm-hmm. like, she's been doing this alone for a while, and mm-hmm. she's kind of gotten to the point where she's like, oh, I don't have to, though. Right. Like, yeah. I don't have to hide this from, from the werewolves. They will help me through these transitions. I really liked the scene, though, when everybody is in her dad's study and Owen, because Serena thought, Owen's on my side. He's going to, you know, work within the political structure of the vampires to better because like he hates the collateral he hates the way everybody's treated all this stuff he's gonna make things better and then Lo and owen come in as if owen had captured Lo. yeah i had one moment of don't you fucking dare owen right mm-hmm. like i it, it there, she did a good flicker of doubt in my mind i'm like no i know i was kind of like where is this man standing i was like you have better come back to me bud well, he Owen even says, like, you thought I did this naughty, didn't you? Right. I'm better than that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't trust me. How dare you, sister? <laughs> but I really liked in that moment where they start doing the double speak again when her dad, I don't know his name, is saying, uh, Serena couldn't even shift. She's, you know, she's half you. And it starts explaining like that he's the one that planted Serena in Misery's life so that he could keep an eye on this half breed. And they do the double talk again where Serena's talking to Misery in front of everyone and saying, I can actually shift. Mm-hmm. And so then Misery does the same thing back to Low, and it's just like. I you thought know. that was a very well thought out scene. Yeah, mm-hmm. she basically says that, you know, that thing that Anna, that you don't think Anna will ever be able to do. She will be able to when she's about this age. Mm-hmm. She's about 25, which is the age they are. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Yep. I do also, though, think, like, is her dad in, like a complete incompetent fool? Because, like, I would be like, that's a really weird thing to say. Why are you saying that right now? <laughs> Well, it, she was, Misery was saying it as if it was like her goodbye, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because her dad's about to slit her throat in an attempt to get Lo to do whatever he wants, mm. which is, I think, to hand over Anna. and Which he will never do. And no. she would never forgive him for doing. Right. Well, and I like that uh, what Misery says is, and is like, the it's actually the first time she says, I love you, I think, to him, is if you were to ever do this, I would love you less. Like, that's mm-hmm. how she says, I love you. Mm-hmm. But she's saying goodbye, and she's using that as a trick. A tricky, tricky trick. Mm-hmm. It's a good tricky, tricky trick. Yeah. I really did appreciate Owen being like, you thought I did you dirty. I'm like, I did for a minute, bud. I did. I was real disappointed in you, buddy. Well, and at one point, the topic gets brought up actually you know misery could take over and owen's like she could that would be fine (laughs) (laughs) i I guess technically you are correct he's a supportive king he yeah he's he's like not happy about it but no one really want it sister you can have it (laughs) (laughs) it's not like i did all the work to get us here (laughs) yeah <sighs> yeah and then Lo just disappears which i was like dude you're not even gonna talk to her what the fuck yeah like i get that she needs her space and she's dealing with like her best friend but also like you could just have a conversation well and then so when the the two serena and misery go to Lo's house and she's like thinking she's just gonna pick up some of her things she finds them already fucking in boxes yeah and assumes the worst she's like oh so we're done i guess this sucks um misread all the signals (laughs) and he's like i mean you could stay please stay please stay i would love it if you would stay forever i'm just redoing your room to put the cool vampire windows in yeah (laughs) you don't have to sleep in the closet and she's like oh that's actually Really nice. It's very nice of you. I just um, didn't want your stuff getting broken. Yeah. <laughs> and then we finally get the nodding scene. We do. Oh, it was a good nodding scene. 
It was. I was a little disappointed that the fact that she's a virgin didn't come back up. It was like she was just primed and ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the idea was that it was showing that, like, they, they mentioned a few times throughout the book that being someone's mate also can change your biology. Yeah. And so I think mm-hmm. this comes back to, again, to Allie Hazelwood being a nerd. <laughs> She's like, this whole time, every step they got closer to that, her biology was changing. Sure. That mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. And it, it was good. It was good. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It, still, it still is like, there's the first three-fourths of the book, and then there's the last quarter yeah. for me. Yeah. And they're not, the, they're just... <sighs> You fucked it up, Lo. You fucked it up. Yeah, his his whole third act breakup felt pretty forced, yeah. honestly. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it was necessary. No. No. Like 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 from a plotting writing perspective. I think you still could have gotten the entirety of the story almost exactly the same way without him having to storm off. Right. Yeah. She right. could have very well been kidnapped. Something could have come up. He'd be like, hey, take her to take mm-hmm. her home i have to go do this and there wouldn't he wouldn't have had right. to break up with her and it would have been exactly the same outcome with uh, without me wanting to taint punch him well, well and they, they could, could have been interrupted mid conversation right. before he got to the point of being able to like answer her one way or another so yeah. it's still in limbo yeah right right and so and then everything plays out the same right because she could still be like uncertain of her of that relationship with him because they never really got to talk about it Mm -hmm. and he could still want to be back want to back off because hey you have serena now Mm -hmm. like don't you want to be with her for like a little bit like some time and he's very well established that he it does not matter what she wants he will give it to her so Mm -hmm. if she if he's not sure if she wants him now like he's not gonna press the issue that's right she got what she wanted out of the whole thing right Mm -hmm. right it's a small change, small little rewrite corner. Right. And it's the exact same book, only better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did really like, though, at the end, his, like, kind of uncle slash big brother figure. Um, is it Keon? Uh, I've been reading it, Conan. How did you listen to it? And it's not it? how it's spelled. I don't remember how it's said. It's spelled. K-E-O-N. Yeah. Anyway, so he he shows up to bring Anna back because he's been while well, all this shit was going down, Anna's been hiding out with him. And immediately he starts to <laughs> walk in the door and sees Serena and is just like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm expecting that we're going to get that yeah. book eventually. Uh in the interview where she was saying she wants to write another one, she's like, I've already committed that these books are coming out next. Like, that's the only obstacle, gotcha. folks. She's yeah. like, it's coming. You just might have to wait. <laughs> yeah. Especially because his character, I was so fascinated with whenever he was on the page. He was just sassy and he loved to cause trouble everywhere. And I was like, I like you. Yeah. And it's going to be an age gap. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be fan mates, obviously. Obviously. It's going to be confusing because she doesn't you know like anything about werewolves. Yeah. yeah. She's, the whole reason she's in werewolf country is so that Juno, the gal... The, the one of the werewolf seconds mm-hmm. uh, is going to teach her how to wolf. And honestly, I thought for a second, those two were going to get together. Same. Uh, uh, I would not be upset about that. Right? Same. I was I, like, oh, plot twist. <laughs> I, was like, oh, like. I will say I do like an age gap when it's like a not like 18 year old and yeah. someone much older. I, I like it when it's, you know, like she's 25. Cool. She is old enough to be her own person not that 18 year olds aren't their own people but like they're stupid they're stupid they're barely not children yes and um he's only he's not that much older like i think he said he was about 10 years older than uh, than low and low is a couple years older than misery yeah so by that math i say 12 years it's probably something Mm -hmm. 12 to 14 ish Mm mm-hmm and uh, there could be plenty of tension, though, right? Mm-hmm. Like kind of the same vibe of him not wanting to put that shit on her while she's just trying to figure out how to live and mm-hmm. exist. Well, and I, I got to say this, because there seems to be some kind of confusion about why we like these books. I'm sorry. The man's in love with her from the jump. <laughs> That's such a we've talked about it. I don't yeah. think on mic, but we've talked about it so many times, the three of us, how compelling it is to the the idea of faded mates where this person is like 
already in love with you Mm -hmm. and is like not compelled in a bad way but compelled to be like I never want to hurt you I Mm -hmm. never want to betray you I always want to see the best for you Mm -hmm. like yeah yeah a truly safe person to be around yes that is male like (laughs) that in and of itself is compelling Right. right and then you add on top that like pretty much all the all the flaws you got he's like yeah, that's cute. <laughs> that works. Woo, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get the confusion at all. I also got to say, if you've never read a book that has the knot situation, this is a really good entry point book. It is. Yes. Yeah. I confused them with Deceived by the Gargoyles. <laughs> well, there's the, the difference in this one than like Deceived by the Gargoyles. Deceived by the Gargoyles, the knot is always present. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in this one, it, it kind of seems to just like be flaccid like the rest of his dick. Until uh, until it's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it is it is a very chill way to get into understanding mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. And also the like aftercare while they're still stuck together. Mm-hmm. Yes. Was so adorable. And he just like rolled them over and cuddled them up. And like she fell asleep. <laughs> yes. So sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what would you guys give the spice? I give it like a 3.5. It wasn't the spiciest book, but it would the spice that we had was well written. And I will say some of the tension moments made me want to claw off of the chair I was sitting on. Yeah. I was also at a 3.5 for what Danny just said. Yes, that. uh, (laughs) Agreed. Consensus. Yeah. Like I said, that like sentencing alone, like, I'm going to read that again. Uh Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so romance Hmm. this is a little bit trickier for me yeah i think i think maybe a three i don't dislike their relationship i like their relationship i actually like that they kind of get to know each other and they have like inside jokes and stuff because she's constantly making fun of the fact that he doesn't know how to do shit with technology and stuff like that they they got to know each other over time which i always agree um appreciate in a romance novel because that is something that is ultimately skipped a lot especially with faded mates sometimes yeah Mm -hmm. and so i do appreciate that they they actually did get to know each other and form a friendship rather than just a fuck ship to start out with yeah i'm i don't know man like on one hand i want to give it a 2.5 because fuck that third act breakup i'm sorry yeah but on another hand i did like a lot of the other scenes Mm -hmm. so like I don't think it's enough to give it a 3.5. So I think I'm going to stick with a three with Danny. I kind of waffled for similar reasons. I really liked their romance leading up to it, that third act breakup. And honestly, without it, it might even be a four. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But it did disrupt everything for me. And so I'm going to also go with a three. What about your overall rating? I gave it a four. I actually really like this book. I liked the cute moments and I loved the moments with with Anna and the world building. I really appreciated it as well because she she gave them this whole culture that gave very logical reasons for why they were doing certain things. You know, there are some aspects of it that I want to give it a 4.5, but I don't think it really lives up to a 4.5. Now that I'm thinking about it and thinking of other books that kind of live in that world for me. So I think I will also go with a four. It was really, really, really good. There's just a few things that I disliked. I disliked how the scenes kind of jumped a little too much. Mm-hmm. Like that really bothered me. I didn't notice it as much in the audiobook because it was a, sure. a um, duet Mm-hmm. reading yeah. so and that could have saved things sometimes that does save things a little bit mm-hmm. sometimes it also fucks with things because then i don't know are you saying this thing out loud or are you saying it in your head true the, the best narration? audiobook readers can you can tell the difference yeah. yes yeah these were pretty good yeah but i just i don't know i i can't get kind of past the third act breakup which i know we've kind of beaten to death so i'm just gonna stick with a four mm-hmm. for me the first three-fourths of this book is a five mm-hmm. i'm in you sold me. You sucked me in. You played on tropes that I love. Right. Um, I love a forced marriage. That's like the way they did the forced marriage in this one is the best way where it is voluntary and not voluntary all at the same time. Yeah. Right. Like it's not like she could, she could walk away. She could say no, 
there just are very severe consequences for a lot of people if she does. Right. Yep. Not severe consequences for her personally. And I, I really like that. And it's not even people that she really even gives two shits about, but she still has the conscience enough to, enough to be like, this a lot of shit is going to go down for mm-hmm. a lot of people who don't deserve any of this if I don't do this. Right. Well, and at the end of the day, she still loves her brother. Mm-hmm. Right. And she talks about it a little bit like we don't know each other really anymore, but you're still my brother and I don't want to fuck with your life. Right. So like I said, first three, fours, five stars. The second it goes to the thir- third act breakup, it kind of becomes like a two for me. Yeah. So I landed on a four as my final rating for overall. And I just hope that that, that we don't do it like that in the future, Ali. <laughs> we, we'd be nice to our characters. Right, we'd be nice <laughs> to our characters. <laughs> just saying. So what are your guys' recommendations then? We've talked about it a lot in this book. I'm going with Deceived by the Gargoyles, mainly because I like the nodding. And... I really like to see by the gargoyles and I will give any excuse to be like, read this book. Yeah. So check out that episode. <laughs> wink, wink. Yeah. Nudge, nudge, nudge. nudge. <laughs> by Lily and Lark. Sorry. I did yes. not say that. Um, I would recommend the book a little too familiar by Lish McBride. It is a werewolf and witch pairing. Uh, it, it's the stakes are much lower in that book. This guy moves in with his friend and his friend has roommates and one of them is this witch and so they're in this kind of like forced proximity kind of situation but the the voice of the the narration is also really sassy and reminds me a lot of like misery's internal voice so i would check that out i'm gonna recommend wolf gone wild by juliet cross um it's also a witch werewolf pairing and the werewolf has been cursed and the witch happens to be particularly good at breaking curses and so he finds that just her like being in her his presence helps but her touch is like oh thank god for relief right um and so yeah I would recommend that. It's a lot of fun. And it's the opener to the Stay a Spell series. I do think, though, the political shit that happens in Resting Witch Face, which was the one that I just finished, is very similar to the political shit that happens in this book. Mm-hmm. But you can't just jump into that book. So, no. yeah. <laughs> You'd miss a whole punch. Yeah. <gasps> okay. That's our recommendations, folks. If you like this episode, please find us out there on the socials at Wrong Dust Jackets. Um, or you can go to our website at wrongdustjackets.com. You can find all the episodes we're going to be doing coming up next. You can go to our blog and read other reviews we have of books. Um, or you can just go out there on all of the places that you find the podcasts. And please give us five stars. Drop a comment. Go on to YouTube if you like to listen there. Uh, and since Google Podcast is a way, you can actually find us on YouTube Music because that's where everything got transferred to. So that's what I've got, folks. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>